Okay, so we are live. Yeah, we're now in the preview mode. This one, can you say we are live in a them with in chocolate, good game, good politics, devoid of partisanship, or even if we get it. talk. So yesterday we talk about the responsibilities and talk little bit as I try for development or conversation that we saw until hopefully we are then supposed for join we in person of um, um take inroads in terms of um social justice articulating the points standing up you know between um, god and because that's what CSOs are supposed to be for or stand for many of is the other man doctor uh, um he gets a distinguished i don't read in profile and i'm kind of uh, impressed uh, almost they see him in my own light. And when he comes now, something like this, so I get for ask him eventually if he does turn up um, from a social sign, because now so I cannot see him. And that almost they inside my own kind of framework as well. Why do I say this? Because when you consider yourself as a social scientist, what you tend for do now for give in the principles of research, in the principles principles of each in the principles of references yeah you you price we as evidence for which you submit or kind of proof which is um a kind of top form of me if that's how I see it so fam will end you on a Hopefully, always it because the people that we can see the present that we can kind of do the talking. I found there are these points of the Saturday, but yet, wait, in many respects. If not all, because the arguments can equally be made. It just kind of mean like um, governance. So using governance for a system so that system they work, it becomes comes to regarding and good governance. They are synonymous in, in changing. Here we are not to join. We, um, because I am not CSO myself, but there are CSOs who are attributed to me kind of way. I do add a to their opinion, not necessarily makes them right, but this is their thought process. And kind of others view, try to see whether we can dismantle the kind of thought process. It's um, social justice. And I always kind of think, say, I speak on um, the basis of social justice. It, so tend for things say uh, they talk about um, issues of um, progressivism being a progressive and within a progressive. I've had this argument many a times where people and we contend for be progressives but are doing things which are counterproductive in terms of the word you know being progressive. So it doesn't really work that way. So I think say uh, they do something in that regard. Uh, they talk about political pluralism, how we democracy the function. How would they entertain, embrace others them for freely express their views in terms of the structure and basis on which we democracy 
they go. It's so clear that we don't necessarily get for be all advocates of the democratic process. When I say the democratic process, I mean as viewed, as pursued by others, because they might be pursuing it in a different way, but then that pursuit comes into question by the vast majority, and especially where the end result, even though it has not ended, but on the way, you they expect the results for the filter down because now so you they go along and they calibrate your policies the way you want for embrace for define this national agenda this way how will they go forward so that's very very um kind of critical so like then like i've been saying today we'll be really want to talk about um these things and um let me just check on we guess them because of course both of them i believe live in freedom sierra leone and there uh, might be constraints i am saying this might not necessarily be the case just be constraints so, so we we'll like for find out whether they're able for join what are they in, you know so like all the first person they might not be online what but if they want to call me, we can raise the charges and we will take, you know, yeah. We are live, we are live, so I'll join. Hello? Yes, Doc. Okay, so, so yeah, of the things so we talk about. So this is one of the guests. Suppose for beyond them, doesn't seem to be really aware of the national profile program. Um is caught up in some been reminded and fully launched to fumble with a call with a second man. Let's see whether he's um, on WhatsApp. Same thing. If he go for answer, but he should be on the platform now. Because that's what I mean. Hello, sir. <laughs> um, it would not suppose for appear will be appearing then just give me the word in the last 30 seconds 45 seconds ago team got caught up with something that busy people and we appreciate that time obviously i'm going to join the program and let we just stay with the program and then we go take them from there so we just to wait for that and send we then live invites, and then we take them from there. But from quick reminder, not away from the program itself, because this is the program. And what did I want to say? No, say we get a report of a spike in the infected of COVID-19. And it's in an official uh, being parroted by the government. And I think it for being some other time short because it appeared to be very, very serious. What I've been saying is like a question all of this, but at risk of law, when the president speaks with police, but it doesn't mean that we cannot accident. And why do this? There was a reckless attitude, in my opinion, and by the measure of many. Many evidences. We national team went on to win, and we know what in football can do. And some of us talk about it. We expressed in organized almost about the way this football business was being carried out. Short 
for long term to we health as a nation. The government decided to go for the short term populist gain. You know, that was the national team win. It unites a nation suddenly, and then we take them from there and say, wow, this is it, and then play on them. And then here the results will be get now with the every say COVID-19, the um, infection rate don't they go up. It could have been before that arrangement the way it happened, but we know say post-celebration of the Leon Stars winning, it get a part for play into this because all waiting they have decided around COVID-19 now for take precautionary measures, social distancing, avoid a close contact and et cetera. But what the government do then, it actually er encourage people. And I'm not making this up, it's on record. And invite people and say, Una turn up, come welcome the national team. In my estimate, that was reckless, that was callous. And even if you won't blame me then, but we get the benefit of hindsight now. We they see now, say government don't come out for admit, say the infection rate don't they go up. But if we have been found one thing, we want to encourage people in carnival style for come mix Gona Stadium from Kalbatong, then you get for own up. I think that's where we need to start from. But again, we get one of we guests already don't assemble um, now the platform. Let's see whether we get audio contact. Um, Mr. Marcos Bangura, good evening, sir. Good evening. Well done. So we do have a, yeah, yeah, thank you very much. We hear you loud and clear. And I want to say thank you very much for appearing on the then and now and taking the honors for appear. And um, you will want to talk a little bit about uh, the rules and responsibilities of CSOs. There's also supposed to be somebody from within that realm of yours. But since we've got you and we are almost 15 minutes, 16 minutes into the program, let's just go straight into Ramakos. Um, I don't they follow you for a while. You are very, very impressive. Very, very impressive. I'm not saying this because you're sitting there. I don't do that. But the record speaks for itself. Where you stand in terms of the work where you do, in terms of civil society intervention, the kind of intervention where you represent. Marcos, give me a brief overview of CSOs, their responsibilities, who you are, and which you do. So family will understand, please. Um, thank you very much or host this particular important program. Um, I must say I'm impressed with your programs, just like when you talk, we said they follow you. Um, I really appreciate, you know, we are able to bring people that we matter in our society or help for educate the society. So me now a civil society activist, um, Presently, I represent the Consortium for Good Governance, Human Rights, and Democracy as the national coordinator. Um, no, I try to understand which is a civil society in the first place. You know, when you talk about civil society, civil society include everybody. If we just use the word civil society, strictly by the word civil society, it include everybody. You know, whether you the government, you know the government, include everybody. But when we talk about civil society organization, then it gets a different nomenclature. And uh, that is to say, a group of people we come together and form an organization for the purpose of advocating for certain needs of the people. The needs that can be rights, you know, it can be welfare, it can be the, 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 the promotion of democracy, it can be that of good governance. Like me, your civil society, and we focus on the area of democracy and good governance. Or I shall say, we promote the culture of good governance, the culture of democracy, so as forget a transparent and accountable society. So democracy, we all know, say, um, na, na absolute, ma uh, um, absolute majority, or let's say absolute political power is vested in the hands of the people when you talk about democracy. Um, we get a government, government are the agency of the states. Government are just an agent of the states, you know? So government gets a responsibility for make sure, say, and perform a rule because now a contract, we government the capital every five years in the case of Sierra Leone. 
the US 4, UK 4, depending on which the constitution say. So the government are an agency, then now we are the people there. So government gets a responsibility to win. Now civil society come inside. Now when we talk generally about civil society, one thing we have to take into consideration, now the fact say um, civil society, now the third sector, we get the private sector, we get the public sector. We, civil society, now the third sector. Now when you talk about the, the public sector, we they refer to all government institutions or anything we get for do with government, that are the public sector. Then we talk about the private sector, you know, les affaires, the business man, them, the banks, you know, then are uh, the private sector. So there was a need for a third sector, where they call civil society, where you stand between the government and the people. And um, civil society, um, that it, 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 it did little outside, it did outside government. So we talk about civil society, Civil society supposed for the outside government. Um, civil society is like a very wide concept, it includes a lot and lot of things. You know, when you talk about, even when we talk about um, trade unions, by the right word, trade unions, you know, you talk about the bar association, even teachers union, you talk even about the church, they are all civil society. But we get different areas of intervention. We they do advocacy. You know, we are civil society, we do advocacy. For me to say, we advocate for the general good of the nation. And as a civil society, you know, for be selfish. You advocacy, not for be limited to only um, an interest of personal aggrandizement. Now, it for be an interest for the general good of all. So that is civil society, a group of people coming together to form an organization, either for do advocacy. You also get civil society with uh, service providers, we you know, build schools, you know, give support. So we get all the different sectors there also. But by the true sense of the word, you know, according to the World Bank and the African uh, Development Bank, the definition for civil society, let's say civil society comprised of a group of people where they do advocacy for nation building, for um, social economic development, sustainable social economic development. These are civil society. And we find ourselves in this particular um, category. So that is it. That if we look at civil society as I know, we get a very long history. Just after the civil war, we see the emergence of uh, there's lots of civil society organizations, you know, NGOs, local NGOs, you get CBOs, they are all civil society organizations. Though that kind of caliber day, not in the, in the sense that then you look at um, the group of people within the civil society by then as half dates. Unlike now, when you get people then, we're well educated, you know, we likes, you know, well educated, and we make sure to see. Uh, we address issues according to how it's supposed to be. So in the Sahelian context, civil society gets a challenge, you know, a challenge in the sense that like we look at Sahel, unlike uh, other countries like Kenya, you know, they get a well-established institution where they cover the activities of civil society, they even regulate civil society, they even get um, codes of conduct, but it's a lot different. We don't get that like that. So in the final so what I want for you do what I want for you do at this point, Mr. Bangura. I will want for you hold you um right there if you don't mind, sir, and sorry for that intervention. But um, okay. that's much said. And what you go to now, definitely I can assure you, say we go country around because it's very critical to this argument for juxtapose okay. in terms of how other societies them, especially in East Africa, we just go to Kenya, for example, yeah. a very advanced society, and as opposed to yeah. with nascent democracy. Um, yeah. Fambulem, um, we also get the second guest we don't sign on, and it has to be um, Dr. Matthew. Dr. Matthew, if you can unmute yourself um, um, quickly, sir. Um, I guess you are a part of waiting, um, Mr. Marcos Bangura, be the talk. And um, Una, or two, let's say from the beginning before you sign, Una get this decent resume. And one thing I'm impressed about the resume, them, 
and I want to pose this to you, is um, you are a doctor, and I believe say you study somewhere in London, in London, yeah, you know, yeah, over a period of um, time. So from a construct of a social scientist, because that's so what I want to look at, in that context there, because which are the try for say, we all believe say, we for look at data, we for look at the analysis based on the data, inform choices where available, the way we can research. And I believe say Mr. Bangu have been talk to. So in that regard, they will they talk about social constructs, will they talk about um, um, materials, the way available, where we can research, especially in your field of interest. Before I pose the first question, I would like for you use the opportunity for introduce yourself quickly. And like Marcos been said, there are different areas of intervention. I've looked at your profile and your resume, quite, quite remarkable, but the opportunity is yours for letting you introduce yourself to Fambulesa. You can unmute yourself and speak, you're mute. Dr. Matthew, you are, you are mute, sir. I don't know whether you get me, but you are mute. You need to unmute yourself. Okay. Let me see if I unmute Matthew. Ask to unmute. I'm just asking him again. Ask to unmute. Let me see if he can perform that task. Ask. Uh, no, I can't because he muted himself. I can only ask him. So, Dr. Matthew, if you hear me, sir, you are mute. You need for unmute yourself. Just click you, you icon, the microphone icon. Just double click on single click on. So let's go back again quickly to Marcos because we haven't got much time and there are a series of things that we need for cover. So Marcos, again, apologies for that intervention, but I want to go right back to the point where I took you be one um, job an analogy between what is happening in East Africa, when it comes to CSOs and their roles and objectives, as opposed to what is happening in our young country. Back to you, Marcos. Yeah, when you look at, because uh, me like research, so you find out, say, we get a vast difference. Like the Sierra Leone context, you find out, say, um, in fact, we don't get any um, acts or any law, in fact, we establish the formation of civil society in you know, order. You can even get, you form your organization without you know, register. It can still operate as a civil society. You know, um, in East Africa, it's quite different. They get the whole, the whole institution, you know, where they run with a set of people, where they regulate the activities of civil society. Because they find out, say, we civil society that's alone. Huh? We can do things at random and uncoordinatedly. Yes. You know, we can just do what we want for do. Yeah, yeah, okay. Hang on, hang on, Marcus. So, Dr. Yeah. Matthew, you, you, you seem for don't find a way for unmute yourself, but hold, hold your piece right there. I will come right back to you, sir. Just remain where you are. Don't speak for now because we got a speaker on the floor, so we're not going to speak over each other. And I will come back to you. Good that you don't unmute yourself, even though your bandwidth seems for be slow, so there's a slow. But hold on right there. Continue, Marcos, please. Sorry about that. Yeah, it's just like what they talk, right? Um, mm. Until these activities of civil society is regulated in Sierra Leone. Otherwise, we're not able to perform. Then we get a lot of you know, intimidation, you know, political intimidation, political discrimination, and political ostracization Now, this particular country, mm. especially where you as an individual, you, know, you are critical on issues like me in particular, the area of intervention of good governance. You know, me like a good governance campaigner and an advocate. So most times it's very difficult for me, me and government to be party. The opposite of good governance, now bad governance. Bad you governance. see? So I've learned I've learned that from you. The the opposite <laughs> of good governance is bad governance. That's one of my mantra now. Thanks to you. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, please. Sorry. So you see? So yeah. like I yeah, so that is the situation. Okay, so um, like the final say, as civil society, we get certain individuals that are easily carried away. Um, as civil society activists, there are certain principles we get for follow. In the first place, we get forget values, certain values like uh, 
and that aspect of being independent and objective. You know, like we say, we get fear of we, where they can have television or radio because the advocates will do. You get some, then just they eat money in the corner. They are never heard, they are never seen, you understand? But they perform as civil society, so they look at picking them, you know? But you look at the number of picking them who get in the streets, irrespective of the fact that we get NGOs where they cover that area. You get some, I don't see NGOs there, the welfare of children. But what are they doing towards the children? You know, large number of them are in the streets. You go to the marketplaces, that is their homes. So they have not done anything, you know, for salvage the situation. So as a result, you know, even international NGOs, they are also civil society. You understand? Just that they can be donor, you understand? We day that we need to corner with advocates for the general good of all. And until we get an established, you know, organ, we actually the regulatory, as I mentioned earlier, say civil society now the third sector. There have been two sectors: the public sector, where the government, and the private sector, where the entrepreneurship. So as a result of that, we are the third sector. Then again, we also take into consideration. Most of we can talk about the press being the fourth estate. You see, and we are the fifth estate. As civil society, we are now the fifth estate. Civil society activism became strong in our society in the, in, the, in the 1980s, you know? And I have to go back in the 18th century where the idea of um, civil society itself started. But we as civil society activists, we for double redeemable with efforts, we for stand tall for what is right, and we for stand for justice, we for do advocacy for the vulnerables, do other way that intimidate either politically or when they face uh, financial constraints and all that they day. Because if you look at, what we get for a look at bad governance, good governance, I'll get a lot of things that way. I feel so, so yeah, thank plan. you. Thank you very much for that. We will come to that. But I'll see whether we're able to give Dr. James Matthew some um, sort of um, um, speaking, speaking um, um, platform. Um, I don't know whether you are now comfortable, Dr. Matthew. Dr. Matthew, do you agree with sir? Yes, I hear you. Brilliant. I'm so happy finally we got you and your voice sounds so very, very clear, which I really, really appreciate. So, Fambule, what I want for everyone to know is um, this is Dr. James Matthew, one of the panelists here for tonight, and you're happy for being the executive director for a center known as the National Center for Human Rights and Development. And one of the reasons why they mentioned this, if we listen to the earlier speaker, is in terms of CSOs, there are different capacities in which they can intervene, but all in between. Uh, in behalf of the people that I means standing in between government but lately there are so much ongoing but again you just stand up mr um, um matthew sorry sorry about that like i say look at your resume very very much impressive and i look at you as um some kind of um a social scientist so the arguments that we they make and um marcus already don't begin um if based on research based on informed choices, whether or not they start uh, data or statistics. I want to tell Fambulem, because we understanding is, Una within a CSOs, they will get different areas of intervention, even though all boys.
Corleone get a link with the civil society. I was a performance analyst, and what will be they do now for make sure say we play an oversight on all government institutions and government ministries, departments, and agencies. And with the help civil society for get the power where state house get for question what in that the stewardship of government officials. That was very and 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 that is the reason for which from 2015, 16, and 17, coming very close to mid of 18, civil society was very powerful in Sierra Leone because its excellency then President Anis Bai Kumar began to open the doors of civil society. He began to open indoors them to civil society them where there not be need for even not at the doors. Civil society being get the latitude, civil society being get a platform of on which for start a whole government accountable. But since the SFP came to power, we don't see say that is lacking in Sierra Leone. And I want for repeat and I and I go repeat and until this program done. That the civil society we used to know in Sierra Leone three years ago is no longer the society we have in this country. Let's do a comparative analysis of watching some civil society organizations that they talk three years ago. Then they define their roles, then they the hold government accountable. They were asking questions. They were on the neck of government. Then they come heavily on the government. And by then, we saw government performing very well. But now this government is not performing because the civil society we we'll get now, not the civil society we used to get three years ago. We don't shift the growth pole. We no longer know what is our role. Instead of we holding government accountable, that we don't go to government and that we don't go to the media and even say what government is doing is correct. And which is very embarrassing in this country. It really, really, really embarrassing. So the role of civil society has to be defined. We all say we're in a civil society then, we need to understand clearly within a civil society, which role civil society for play with respect to moving democracy, which role civil society for play and for ensuring that human rights take a very strong stage in this country, which role civil society for play for bring accountability, which role civil society for play for let get for not get a level playing field, a level playing field, so that all political parties then go able to practice their political activities without fear of intimidation or reprisal. Okay, and Dr. As Matthew. far as it stands, yes, please. Okay, Dr. Matthew. I mean, that was a lot said there. I want to move quickly to Marcos, but before I move to Marcos, I want to ask you one or two punch questions um, quickly, just for understanding this. Because um, this seems to be a scathing attack and you don't hold back at all. You don't appear like a man, even on the fence. You make your position clearly known that what existed then, in a positive sense, is extremely different as to what they happen now. The restrictions are many, the roles and responsibilities of an entity for which you stand for are basically non-existent. But here is my question to you. Why you seem for lavish praise, and I'm not holding back, you seem for lavish praise on a past government that they were more generous in terms of your activities, not personally to you, but give you a leeway, along with many other people where they practice this discipline where they practice, that is lacking now. Will that be the correct characterization of what you just say, just no, sir? Oh, yeah, exactly. Thank you very much. Um, what you make, I emphasize that I'm not new to governance in Sierra Leone. Uh, oh, yeah, absolutely. The resume, the resume and the introduction, you know, yeah, speaks to that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I've been yeah. getting the opportunity for the, you know, the highest cable of governance in Sierra Leone, being a state house as a policy advisor and also as a performance analyst, which means I've been getting a lot for do with government, monitoring government ministries, departments, and agencies. And I've been getting a lot for make sure, say, the government of Sierra Leone understand clearly what's going to happen with respect to governance inside the country. Now, why I've been using that word for, say, the then administration, the APC administration, they mean open their doors. Civil society was very, very, very proactive by them. Now, not the CM. Now, the reason of the fact, say, when the SFPP government was in operation, they will make a lot of promises. Let's go back to the SFPP manifesto and clearly look at what they've been put with respect to governance, with respect to human rights, with respect to civil society. Now, a different thing would they see entirely. When they can, the first thing they do, they restrict civil society. What thing they do next, they make sure, say, even the civil society, the, the NGO policy for which the civil society of this country not been led. They've been promised we faithfully say we then can then get for review them. They didn't review it. Instead, what did they do? Then act on them more heavily, restricting 
civil societies, restricting freedom of expression, restricting freedom of assembly, restricting freedom of association. In fact, going to the extent for even make sure, say, those civil societies, them, where they, they come heavily on the government, then beat them. We have seen civil society be beaten in this country. We don't see the non lock civil society business in this country. So I am not alleging against them. I am part of the system and I'm very integral to the system of this country. I know what is going on. It's not an allegation. This present administration don't make the work of civil society very, very difficult. I want for repeat them. It don't make them very, very difficult. The then APC government, you may, you may have your own opinion. It, it was not a good government, as some people may say. But now, three years down the line, everybody may know, say, APC was a very good government because they don't mean they chair civil societies up. The media have been very open. Civil society have been going about the media, saying what they want to say, pulling press releases, holding government accountable. But those civil societies are now quiet. They are quiet because for any time we make an attempt to attack the government, we make an attempt for make sure say we put government on its toes, you see civil societies being seriously attacked. So that serious attack now is at least some some some, some of you some of you. Well, yes. Uh, well, I know one for me a little bit specific. I know one for me. I want for be generic in my statement. Yeah, because no, no, I get, I get, I get, I get so, at you, but at the same time, I want for let you temper down like. It's not only, or it's not all of civil society, and this is not one take to Marcos, it's not all of civil society, because some civil society are complicit. Um, 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 uh, let me move on to Marcos um, quickly, but many thanks, um, um, Dr. Dr. Matthew. Marcos, here is the thing. It's, this is a scathing attack. Dr. Matthew, no hold back. Um, from what you hear, Yusef, they say, Yusef gets your ifs and buts. Some of this might sound extreme to you. I'm not going to go into that. But my question to you, Marcus, is like, um, there is this growing division, and that I take from Dr. Matthew, this growing division, which is not based on structure in terms of the practice we all get. It's not based on structure, but it's one rather based on ideology or principle because the structure is the same. Civil society is meant to act as a buffer for the people between government and the people. But because of these ideological differences, CSOs, different CSOs are having different take as to how um, government, they operate along with UNA. What's your take on this particular one, Marcos, this growing division, not based on structure, but ideology and principle? Um, thank you very much. A like, very, very interesting question because um, it boils down at the country, you know? Um, of course, we don't, I don't establish you know, about civil society, because we can't talk about rules, functions, values, and other things. We, for the audience out there, we have to make them understand which is our civil society, self, 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 self. We need someone to learn for understand, you see? So that we can start in that perspective. Now, when we talk about the division, um, as I say, being a good governance expert, you know, we'll talk about uh, the division. Um, every government gets a responsibility, even the international community. They have so much respect for civil society. And they always they tell every government, say, you have to work with civil society. You know? So government gets a responsibility for include civil society in their structure. And where governments do so, it's a good governance. And where government not do so, not bad governance. And these are the deficiencies of bad governance. You know, it will lead to division. And that's usually the come from above. The policymakers, those in the corridors of powers, those that formulate the policies, you know, will create the division. And I want to say I'm categorically and unequivocally say, this government don't contribute immensely in creating that division among civil society. So if civil society become divided today, now, as a result of um, the government's policies, the way they look at things. Because you look at the characteristic of a leader. A leader, he can um, 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 determine legitimacy through leadership. And that legitimacy of the leadership is based on the character of the leader. You understand? The character of the leader and um, waiting in by, you know, will lead to that because there is total division, just like we, Dr. Matthew BDC. We've had you know, a good number of civil society 
um, um, activist them, where they contribute immensely, where they check the activities of government, where they apply speed bombs on the speed of government on certain issues that we contrary to the desires of the people. But as it is now, most of the people then they don't become quiet. Then they see the odds and they are saying little or nothing, you know, for salvage that particular situation day. So as a result of that, uh, become divided. And Ma Marcus, please. Marcus, Marcus, one minute, one minute, please. And I don't mean for derail you, hold your thought right there. And this is sometimes what I do. Some people appreciate, some people don't, but there's a reason why. You yeah. you paint a picture just now and you use some kind of physiology which I kind of like, but I need some kind of explanation. You talk okay. about some kind of speed, but almost like a theory. And probably yeah. you may be the first for introduce this, but in 10 years time, then when they talk about some kind of speed bump that somebody mentioned within CSO. Well, what do you mean by this speed bump and suddenly it's not like these people have compromised this, this, and they this. no longer matter. You get what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. Thank you. These speed bumps, we will say uh, um, problems. We will say that constraints, that restraint, you know, against civil society, right? Now, when you hand pick a civil society, you hand pick them. Say, for example, I like just clarify this. We don't see a situation where the president don't invite civil society activists there, you know, on certain meetings. We don't see how you don't invite certain journalists there, you know, on a cocktail dinner or whatever, you understand? But they are selected, you know, they are selected, like me, who is it also? Because me not to tell a civil society, but the short time I don't take that civil society, I feel say we have created one of the, the greatest impacts, you know, that civil society. Because no space may not just take around three, four years. But the fact remains that we have created a kind of an impact. If some of we not been there, the issue of civil society has already exist. Because only a few of us right now, we would not even reach five, where in this country, where they come up and challenge issues that this country has so without fear without favor, you know, very vibrant and all that. Why should we get a large number of people? Yes, they are civil society. You understand? But the fact is that their contribution, perhaps that on finances, you understand, but not actually that voluntary service. We are doing a voluntary service. We are not gaining anything. Where some TRP, for example, at my 91, we are there. You know, where the Commission of Inquiry come, we challenge government on several issues there. You know, where issues come on, you know, a lot of things on governance, we really challenge them. But we find out saying the division is a speed bump by itself. Where government creates division, I make us in a bad governance because you have a responsibility of working with civil society, you know, as the third sector. So when you begin for for for, for see them, you know, you take like where you receive something, you look at certain people and say, I have to work with these ones, and others I will not work with them. Despite even within we civil society, and I just tell you, say, I attend a program where one of the, 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 the parastatals then called. So I was invited and I contributed immensely. I spoke for about 20 minutes. You have others that did not say a little thing, you understand? At the end of the day, because they invite me, when I be small money, they get about 250,000 for those who went. Yeah. Those guys have to have meeting with government officials, say, hey, they, they invite my course, they all. On this <laughs> meeting, yes, you understand? So thereby, oh they the fair way for you know for ostracize me. I don't attend a program that go on um, this um, how you call them this on Zuma parliament because we the go. You call me, not call me, we the go. You understand? Pass. Yeah. You call me in a state as society get barrier in Sujama there. We can't force our way. So we went to go. You understand? At the end of the day, there was certain amounts of cash for journalists uh, and for journalists and civil society when. Somebody when a civil society directly say this person is irresponsible. When we meet her, he sent me to a journalist. Wait, where well are we have the facts? I'm not a journalist. You know? So you see the greed, you see that ideology will not become addicted. And certain people, then, and I'll tell you, there are certain civil society individuals then will say they enjoyed, they worked under the former government. Just like when Dr. Matthew talk say, civil society by then never had the kind of situation where they face now. Most of those guys worked with government, the open uh, 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 government initiative, uh, 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 initiative, something like that, OGI, you understand? They work there, and they get most time, most of them survive greatly. But these are the guys now coming, you know, they apply speed bombs against okay. certain individuals. 
Okay. Of uh, not uh, attending Mar certain programs. Mar Mar Marcus, Marcus, um, before I go to Dr. Matthew quickly, I want to just deal with this quickly because we will talk about this again. But because you mentioned, I mean, related to something I want to talk about going forward, I want to let you mention, I mean, passing, you know, your summer quickly, which is something about the public space because the impression of which you talk about is um, your area of intervention. Of course, a one parallel, diametrically opposite to USAI government kind of team up. So yeah. one goes supposedly thinks a space is being stifled for people like you, if you like. Is this thing like you not can get opportunity for going on TV or use the annals of um, um, media, especially the one controlled domestically for espouse, for elucidate, for explain? For narrate you narrative, you know, here to the Sierra people. Yeah, um, that's that, that's true. If, if they follow me, they find out say, present like they do more of quotation and points, just to the social media for making rich people them. You understand? Because of the fact, say most of these television stations, right? They really they restrain we, because we are critical minds. And for some time now, for quite too long, we don't address issues as they are. So because of this, either probably governments is bribing them or they, they panic for call we. But the fact is they are not calling us. And when you do, do so, you they restrain civil society. Then at the same time, you they encroach upon the principles of good governance. Okay. Because the kind of law don't play from that period, even to the election period to that time as political analysts, you know, a civil society and a political analyst, we don't look at issues, we don't do a hair split analysis a very, in a very objective form for the general good of all. But what in government wants? Now people are really praise them. Okay, 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 Marcus, them. Marcus, Marcus. Um, again, yeah. hold your thoughts right there. We will come to that. Um, I like the buzzwords, the charge words, you know, yeah, that you're using and the analogy that we attached to that, like hair split. Goodness me, it sounds atomic, it sounds physical, and we will get for stream reminds. But I'll go back to Dr. Matthew quickly. Dr. Matthew, if you are there, sir, um, part of your own kind of intervention in which you represent is lobby and policy advocacy, research and documentation, the promotion and protection of human rights. And I want to repeat that and lay emphasis on that because now I want to go to next, which is the, pro the promotion and protection of human rights. You also do monitoring of elections, strengthening political parties, participation in governance. Very, very key and critical, you know, your kind of position there. And we can talk about all of this in an entire segment of a program. But I want to boil down to one or two. And the first one is promotion and protection of human rights. Because there are many questions of protection, you know, and the promotion of human rights. The police are under the hammer. Including the chief, the head of the police. You, as a human rights person and a CSO, in that direction, when a part of your intention, what have you done? Has been documented? Do you agree that there's massive human violation in the first place? Are you documenting this? What is organization doing? And you, as the CM, the chief executive officer. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, I think, say, um, before I go to the question, let me just rub more small with respect to what uh, Marcos did say. Marcos is absolutely, is, is, is very, please. Yeah, yeah, he's very clear, and what he did talk exactly what in is, is what is going on on the ground. Um, for me, it, it goes beyond just saying dividing civil society, you know, is. One, one thing where this present administration don't do, now for make sure, see, they're not really getting no business with those who are critical minds of this country. They wonder where they really did map and say, I, I mean, I, I mean, use one word, I say, speaking truth to the power, you know? If you are that kind of person, if you are that kind of person where you take government to tax, and I want to emphasize that I am one of the key role of the civil society is for make sure to ask critical questions, is to do research, is that, that for come out with a press releases on issues we are not interested, now for give reports to the international community and even the United Nations. 
And that is what exactly I want to talk about now. The National Center for Human Rights and Development, every year, every year we will produce an annual report. As I talked to this medium, so now, with 2019, 2020 human rights, state of human rights reports, where it's similar to the report with the Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone they produce. In fact, we are saying, now we're there for the, the first human rights civil society NGO in Sierra Leone who produced a state of human rights report similar in nature, like the human rights report where the Human Rights Commission of Sierra Leone they produce. Now, what thing we report entails? We report entails all the human rights abuses and violations them. Specifically, the human rights violations in where the states they violate. If I can give you an example from the time when His Excellency Brigadier Julius Madabio came into power, we don't follow M91. No police was arrested. They don't kill Namai 14. No police was arrested. They don't kill Napandemba Road, more than 50 people. No police was arrested. They don't go kill Namakeni. Nobody was arrested. They don't kill Natumbo. The list goes on. We don't document all that report. And we send and go to the United Nations as we universal periodic review report. Just last year, that was what we did. And that report, as I'm talking to you, the United Nations been get for use that report for review Sierra Leone for the second time. And a lot of issues where the National Center for Human Rights and Development been put inside that report there. The government of Australia began for agree for say indeed because like Marco said, imagine you have more than 200 civil societies in Sierra Leone, and none of these civil societies they not send a report to the United Nations for give a third party report to the UN as to what the government of Australia is doing for promote and protect human rights. So which means if the National Center for Human Rights and Development not even produce a report, the report to the government of Australia for don't produce, then the United Nations for don't take. But we yeah. produce an alternative report. Yeah. And that report will bring out all those critical issues. The Panama will kill him. As I talked to you, so we are still behind government for giving the statistics of the total number of people who we have killed at Panama Road because government may lie. The statistics of government may give us correct. Over one year, over one year on. Oh, yes. Up to now, from where the vice president here will say that they set up a tax force where they will look into that uh, killing and get back to the nation. Very nothing will, will not happen. And all the killings were at the outline store. No police officer have been arrested or even detained. So which means the human rights record of this current government is not good. I am not judging them. I am not the United Nations. But from the Universal Product Review Report, the second circle, it clearly came out that this government know they do very well for promote and protect human rights. There is no light as to speak so in, in this country. Life not the better. We don't get good, we don't get water, water not day, people that are strained for water, we don't get good education. The health facility is very poor. Youth and employment is bad. Employment not in the country. With education, they all don't go behind. And these are the things that we talk say. If government is moving forward, if government get respect for human rights, if there are values for human rights, these are the things that we government for look into. We don't see gender disparity. If there are plenty in the country, we don't see Police, the, the rule of law, in fact, the rule of law, in, it don't die in the country. It don't die so much that we don't get nothing for say about it in this country. We talk about corruption. The corruption way that they fight, it only has to do with corruption we get for the members of the opposition party. I'm okay. not indicting ACC. ACC is a partner to the National Center for Human Rights and Development, but don't pick a lot of votes with them, that the ACC work is fine. We, we commend them. But then work will go beyond just chasing members of the opposition party. If we are talking about holistic approach to uh, fighting corruption, then we don't forget the secret cow. Quite recently, ACC put a report about the office of the first lady. And that report will be good. We make comment against it. It was bad. Yeah. It was really bad. I will not want to see a ACC where it just concentrate on members of the opposition parties. So all said and done, the human rights record of this country is not good. And why we say it's not good, we don't take a, a, a very tough stand for make sure say we go to every corner of this country, we get district coordinators, we get regional coordinators, whether they give a report on a weekly basis as to what's in the corner of the country. 
And as I speak to you, so they are listening, some of them, they don't get linked, they listen to it, and they know so that they talk is true. That human rights record is very bad. Police and they kill, police don't get regard for the people them. One of the fundamental law, I mean, fundamental responsibilities of the police is to save life and property. The same police that they turn the gun to the people and then they kill them. We don't get more killings during the eight SFPP three years regime than the 10 years where APC been in power. They don't kill more people. Police don't kill more people. So right to life, not to anything in this country. You can be killed at any time in this country. We don't see unlawful detention. There are plenty. Yeah, the case of Sylvia Blyden, the case of Paolo, the case of Paolo in White. You name them, the former mayor, all these things. So unlawful yeah. detention, they are the increase in the country. You know, first with okay. the Takiran, a place in the country. Remember from the opposition party that they run away, then they left the country, you don't know their way about. All those things. Okay, Dr. Doctor, Doctor, human rights and development. You don't put them together. Dr. James, Dr. And James, Ma them, Dr. Yeah, James Matthew. Yeah, yes, yes, sir. Um, Dr. Dr. James Matthew. Um, sorry, sorry, sir. I come, I, I come in, you know, because even me, Seth, way they host the program, you are making me emotionally connected to some of the things where you don't say. Because, yes, I do follow some of them. I try to do researches on my own, get reports from home. And um, I'm kind of disappointed. And Fambule, where they listen, I didn't come to this program for Kanyeri, somebody, because I suppose say Dr. Matthew based on the ground. And sometimes they work in hold them program there. I think Marcus was on the program the last time. There were a few people on the program where we get issues with electricity. But every time where we try for say that, in good faith, for say there's no electricity, the books and everything else, the kitchen sink is thrown at people like us. It's like we're an alarmist and we are only trying to do this, which is the reality. And one of the reasons I notice you constraints tonight, I refuse for highlight them because it's, 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 it's physical. We can see them on the screen even before you come on. But yes, you self don't articulate that now in terms of electricity and on and on, even though I know we expect for both that way. They, but this is just the reality that I don't have to say it. It's so prevalent into this region. And I that you they say, and I began for stop you at some point because I get a little bit emotional, a little bit, you know, kind of fearful. The channel. So um, thank you very much. Last switch quickly, you know, here to um, Brother Marcos. And Brother Marcos, here, here is the thing. So, um, Dr. Matthew, I mean, without holding back, without sitting on the fence, he went, he went deep. He went deep, and you hear him. I don't even need for kind of repeat. Yeah. And all of these have been documented. Things where everybody's concerned about, specifically human rights, all the killings that have taken place, the abuse of our people, where some people and things say no matter, because yes, every day brings a new day, and it's time to say people and not forget. But waiting the doctor articulate so, it shows people have forgotten, they get other things they for do, but all of these things have been documented. In your um, um, pursuit in terms of um, civil society, sir, we stand as an interventionist for good governance. Because the opposite of good governance is bad governance, and you stand on the precipice of good governance. How much have you done, you and your organization, in terms of documentations and et cetera, et cetera? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, in the first place, I subscribe to uh, Dr. Matthew's statements, then, you know, about the gross violation of human rights and the fact that within this short period, we don't face, you know, Huge lots of human rights abuses. I don't want to go back and repeat the Absolutely. areas that we yeah. There's no time. Understand. Yeah. But yeah. apart from even the areas and they, we do look at the area of discrimination, where we constitution society against, you know, we the aspects of uh, human rights abuse as well. You know, um, we look at the area of um, employment, you know. Um, this government in manifesto, we they call the people's manifesto. One area we even talk about that the issue of the youth and the creation of jobs, because according to the government, large number of people we are either um, um, youth we are either underemployed or not even employed. You understand? But we don't see the one that says we can get job. They suck a lot, a lot and lots of people. Left. Like even myself, who are so, I mean, a victim of that ugly circumstance. I'm not ever woke. Um, 
um, um, for government, as a matter of fact. I don't be a teacher, I don't be a lecturer, you know, I don't work like the corporates, I don't work on emergencies, you know, situations. Um, I was fired, I don't know, when I was working at NATCOM as legal and public affairs manager, you know, just for the first time when I get a job with a cop with, with, with a parastatal, not directly yeah. with government, for just yeah. two years, I was fired. That is gross human rights abuse. Now, if you look yeah, at no, number of people- No, 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 hang on, hang on, hang on, Marcus. There are thousands of people really here you now, always subsequently get fired. You. you were fired just because of, I mean, is there evidence because maybe performance wise- I was- I, I, I was- to go. Yes. I, I you know what you this guy for saying? Because you're on record and you can clarify that now. So people are exactly why that. you were fired. Yes, I was fired by the Minister of Information and Communications, right? And for reasons best known to him, because you get an area and that's what they call um, Universal Access Development Fund. And they have been there. In fact, no letters were given to us, just a single letter. The minister say they want close force, then they do some restructuring, then thereafter they will call me back. We are never called. We are never called in that office, you understand? Yeah, so there is no way to say. And most times, and most times, when you talk like that, the people they say we don't get paper. You know, when I fallacious presentation of material, you don't when go. When you say paper, you mean you mean like qualification? Like educates. <laughs> we don't get educated. We, don't, we are not educated. <laughs> you understand? We have paper. You understand? We thought them are the this because I get reports, dozens and dozens of reports from um, um, statistics yes. here. Remember, I was mass in very, very, in very, very sorry. Statistics. Yeah. In the find out say now a mirror. We they use statistics as a mirror for reflect on most of the activities that we they do because we are calling names and most of the names that we they call. In the find out say that names from a particular region. Not enough. Okay, okay, Marcos. Let me go back again. You know where we are. Uh, I think Sierra Leoneans, most Sierra Leoneans, have adjudicated on this issue. We know yeah. there's no waiting to go on. And thanks for highlighting that back. But okay. just let we not get distracted. We go continue okay. for talk about this though. But let me get back on point, please. Okay. As for what we do in terms.
So, so we don't look at that area as a, day, a lot. We didn't get one on one people already kind of office. Where they get issues. We don't see there was a time where God meant to one for getting representation in every area. You know, we get people there, for example, the drivers union, they don't do a huge, they don't do letters there to we. The Okada riders, they don't do letters there to we. We don't come in the forefront, you know, but make sure so we address their issues and they we get people away um where they're also the, the deprived, big sat and all that kind of thing. We get records and there are many, many areas. So the we talk of human rights, you know, human rights are inalienable rights, where each and every one of we for enjoy. But you find out say not only on killings, killing are one aspect, the right to life. You understand? Apart from that, you get hit lots of human rights abuses. You understand? We forget, we get with economic rights. And we've been deprived of our economic rights. Even when you sack somebody for no reason, you know, you don't deprive them of your economic rights because you know you go face constraints, it causes a lot and lots of problems. And all let's see how you go so we can reflect on these reasons or the causes of the war, you know, the civil war that's like Leone. We get the TRC, you know, TRC made recommendations, right? And these recommendations, you know, we for imbibe them, we for be an integral part of it. I make I always say that we don't need peace commissions, that's like Leone. Always we need a thorough implementation of good governance principles. Because when we put good governance, say, for example, accountability, where government accountable, where government has paid and true communication, telling us the activities, the policies, and all that, you know, where government fear enough, we really get issue. But when there is discrimination, you know, human rights issue, they come inside it. You understand? So when because there is discrimination, human rights issues yeah. that they come there, and we don't need all the commission there. All we need for do now for following <laughs> the procedure there, where you outline. Thank you so much, um, Marcos. And we are quickly running out of time. So the next few questions they want to come post to me, guests or submissions them. I just expect for let we deal with them short, short, you know, yeah, because time is really never enough. Time is elusive. Now, one valuable commodity, and we all for value. Fambo Lem, this now the Den and Now Media Empire today, the 1st of July. Mm -hmm. We are hosting Mr. Marcos mm -hmm. Bangura, a CSO, and we also the host Dr. Um, Matthew, mm -hmm. another CSO. And we talk about issues mm -hmm. there. I need to go check these people in profile. Mm -hmm. So, where would they have this national conversation? Mm -hmm. We know what in the national conversation is all about. Dr. Matthew, like I say, sir, we are quickly running out of time. So I got a few questions that were bought in quickly. And if you can just deal with them quickly. So we go um, kind of um, finish with this program on a high. With all what I don't say, it appears like there is a growing division within this the rank and file of CSOs on different kind of fronts. Whether or not between ourselves, and this now they try to forget to, there are different CSOs. There might be CSOs with supportive of government programs. I'm not sure whether there's anything wrong with that, but there might be, or there are contradictions. The contradictions are, for example, um, a CSO might be supporting government, but the role of the CSOs, as I understand from UNA the experts, now for provide a buffer between the people and the government. And for now, from what I hear, government is not doing quite well, but some CSOs still happen for their government. What say you, Dr. Matthew? Yeah, um, thank you very much. Um, I think say, for the one that we the patriotic, then love this country. I don't know if I get to I need to get to now. Me the me me you, and I shall say, Dr. Matthew, they hear you, Marcos. We are, I'm still hearing you loud and clear. Mm. Yeah, Mr. Yeah. gets you loud and clear, Marcos. Okay, so go on, sir. It's clear. Okay, yeah, yes. Um, as I've been say, uh, yeah, Thomas. For for a lot of well, we we very patriotic in this nation. Doctor Doctor Matthew, sorry, I'm I mute you, sir. Unmute yourself. Sorry, I've been mean, trying to mute Marcos. I think Marcos is having a conversation in the background. Yeah, Doctor James, go on, sir. I think you don't unmute yourself. Go on. Okay, okay, you get me now. Yeah, loud and clear, sir. Okay, thank you very much. I'll yeah. mute you briefly because I think they may try to have a conversation. So you can unmute yourself for you, ready, Dr. Mafi, on the floor. Go on, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. So, yeah. as I've been mean saying, for those who then look at Sierra Leone, because now we are divided not only with respect to being civil societies, but even on tribal lines, on regional lines. Or, I mean, it don't really escalate. It used to be, but this time around, the past three years, you don't escalate to such an extent that even your degree or your qualification don't get no value in this country except you belong to a political party 
except you belong to a tribe, and which is very bad. On the side of civil society, uh, why don't division them? Now, because people that they look at civil society now say, again, for do with me tribe. If I am coming from the South, Southeast Mina Mende, and SFPP is a many dominated uh, party, so I don't foresee anything with respect to civil society, even if they, they do bad. If I am a Timni or a Limba, and APC is in power, as he say, APC don't do bad, I don't get nothing for say bad about them because it's my party. So you see, civil society, they would have lost focus and we lost strength as to who that are we. And because of that, it, it, I mean, the society becomes so polarized. There is nobody, Marco said it, and I want to repeat them, there are not more than five or six critical civil societies right now in this country with the whole government accountable, you know, plenty. There are more than 100 civil societies, but you don't get five with the whole government accountable. We were very critical. We were the whole government accountable. We were the ask critical questions. Then they look at we, in fact, say we are APC civil societies. When APC, you know, it's in savvy way. So it is important for law to understand tonight that civil societies are divided on the basis of the facts say, it, I mean, we are no longer interested in the country, we are no longer interested in the issues. What is now interested in, and for safe guide will party because we came from the southeast, or for safe guide will try if the president is a Mende, or oh, I am a Mende, and I did in civil society, or what I should be doing is even if police mango shoot person and kill him, I don't foresee that in a bad thing. Even water not in the country, I don't foresee nothing. Even light not day, I don't foresee nothing. Even when employment is very, 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 very high uh, unemployment is very high in the country and not for say nothing so now on their lines there now so even those who are claiming for this civil society so i would look at them and say they are not civil society then so they even they those who are claiming to be civil society some of them are not civil society and you make exactly. a good point and I, yes sir and yes, i want to take this some of them are not civil society they yeah are, i agree yeah, Dr. Matthew, they come right back to you because okay. we are quickly running out of time, like I said earlier on. I get your point, and I promise you I will come back to you. I just want to take the same point to Marcos quickly for let Matthew uh, and Marcos rather address this. And Marcos, what the doctor just say is quite telling, it's quite chilling, bone chilling. It sounds like identity politics. So we just they go along because Adena decide like how people like you say, so therefore, even though the narrative is wrong, but I go go along. These are dangerous times, isn't it? Um, Dr. Matthew is absolutely correct. This that is a serious problem. Um, for make we country forge ahead will be very, very difficult. One that civil society, but even apart from civil society. Even we, as citizens, individuals within our country, we look at things as they are and call them by the name. You know, by the time you stay, you get certain people there now will be very vibrant, very active, you know, before this government can apply. But today, because of tribe, because of region, because of uh, uh, um, sentiment, because of interest, you know, in the final say they are not. So what is the essence of you being a civil society activist? As a civil society activist, you want to serve as a watchdog for keep government on its toes. You know, because if you don't serve as a watchdog, government gets the tendency for do anything we want to do. So that we occupy that public space. For make sure say we apply speed bump, just like what I tell you, we have to apply speed bumps, you know, for check. That is check. For check the activities of government. But most civil society are not doing. They don't even care. They don't want to know. You understand? Okay. They don't. Mar Marcos, 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 Marcos. Um, deal with this quickly. And again, forgive me for the short post. And that was also going to Dr. Matthew. Um, we don't hear you now. And I make from the beginning of the program, we ask for let you provide and Dr. Matthew provide an overview waiting yeah. civil society represent. So yes, we don't hear you, all of waiting they kind of happen, the contradictions and etc. But it not mean say a CSO cannot speak to government. If CSO speak to government, does that automatically mean complicity or what are the criteria? Just because I speak to government, I'm not supposed to speak or when I speak, is there some kind of norm, some kind of code where I'm supposed to follow? You get, you, you, do you get- I get, where, where, I get, I get your point. You, yeah, deal with that, please. We, we get the responsibility for speak to government. Yes. But at the time, say, let's say this, let bust this news now to you. That, <laughs> no, that this government, this government, 
the, the, you know, they, they work on the strategy. Part of the strategy that applying using democracy, transforming democracy to gridiocracy. Understand? We have democracy, we all know it's a democracy, from democracy to gridiocracy, under bureaucracy. Understand? Crazy. So I don't talk about this, democracy. This sound, this sound, this sound like a new coinage from you again, brother. Yes. You sound really wonderful. Yes. And need for the take note, you know, yeah, because eventually yes. you might yes. have to put a copyright on some of these things that you are creating. Indeed, indeed, indeed. <laughs> democracy, we also in the government, we get bureaucracy, and bureaucracy is a blend of democracy and authoritarianism. Understand? Then there comes in grid. Gridiocracy, they have tightened everything to an extent that if you are not man enough, you know, you can't say anything because you are, you are, because you want to live through them. You want to go through them. You want to survive through them. So as a result, so they, they, compel, are, they compel you, like in a scenario, either you are with us or you are against us. But if you are with us, the president, can... the president, the president says he's ready to work with those where he's be by the world where he's be which these are people that have surrendered, you know, all their rights to the government. So as a result of that, he worked with them. So they are not compelled in terms of physically, but psychologically they are compelled. Understand? Forget themselves, subjected or subdued. So waiting governments they do. Some of we, we stand on waiting, we believe in. We believe, say, we get passion for good uh, 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 for civil society. And one reason we go to society, not to out of enjoyment, now because we have suffered injustice. So with that mentality in us, that we have suffered injustice, that bring we can for facts for people learn where they ostracize, where they go through injustice. So as a result of that, a lot of people are not compelled physically, but mentally, you know, and it was Marcos Gavi and Bob Mali where he talks, say, we get for emancipate with mind. Understand? So, in as much as from we get mental, from mental extent, slavery, mental slavery, you understand? So, that, that emancipation should not only be limited to mental slavery, but that mind, you know, the mind yeah. need yeah. for be emancipated. You understand? So, this mind, a lot of people, they're still tired of the state that they can't move. You understand? In the sense that that, that mentality in them, you know, have been subjected, like have been cobwebbed to an extent that they're not able to move. Just like in Macbeth, you understand? He said, we, we talk about say, you've been tied on a stake that you can't move. So the government okay. of gridiocracy, the government of bureaucracy, the damping democracy, and okay. it is not good for our nation. Okay. Okay, um, Marcos, let's go to Dr. Um, Matthew quickly. And we, they come to the end of the show. Dr. Matthew, we get 30 seconds, 45 seconds, and the same thing applicable to Marcos for address this short burst of questions. Mm -hmm. And then we give on a final submission of one minute or two minutes. But we've actually run out of time. Dr. Matthew, with all what you've said here, you, 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 you're obviously critical. You're not on side. No government will like waiting you they try for articulate. Only the people will appreciate and embrace and embrace you. So therefore, what I want to take to, to you is the government is very powerful. It, government get a local space and can use the resources where available to run both in power institutions and you name it. Do you feel, um, I mean, do you feel like sideline? Do you feel like um, the, so the social space, political space, economic space is being closed down on people like you? Like with Marcos, in other words, if you are not submissive, if you are not with us, if you don't have that mental capacity for think the way how we think, then of course you are left out. Do you feel that way? And therefore you're not able to articulate the things the way you want to do for you, Sigalioni and people as a CSO? Yeah, thank you very much. Um... Well, uh, yes, uh, I want to throw the line of uh, Marcos or say uh, in this part of the world, government will only like the one day we and they talk good about them. Um, but we know, say, the word civil society, a like generic word, and it means say, you for stand for the people. Civil society, not to a priest singer for government. Civil society, not for agree with government. We can agree to disagree. Yes, why would they help why would they help the government 
in the agenda for make sure to bring development come at the same time we can be critical with respect to issues we are not like the country and against that backdrop the national center for human rights and development and me as an individual and marcus was talking about uh, him being uh, removed from his job i suffered from the same thing that's that's that's, that's okay we, we may have to save that for another day like i say we get short bust okay but the right, point yes, the point please. is taken and the point is noted marcus exactly so yeah so, that's that's so, all right so, sir I they, come, I they come back to you you, you you've touched okay. on the issue like i say it's okay. brief but, all right. but but marcus Political pluralism, pluralism rather, are they get tongue tied now? I think I've spoken a lot. Political pluralism, progressiveness, and that social space where people like you and Dr. Matthew they advocate for. It seems like it's been it's been compressed, and especially to people the way they ask for objectivity. Do you feel like a victim? Yeah, I feel um, I'm a victim. You know, I'm a victim because. Um, in democracy, political pluralism is very, very important. In other words, we say political tolerance. We may have divergent views. Respect me, not only for who that I be, but respect me, respect what I say. Yeah. Understand? What I say, you need for respect. Her. You could disagree with me, but you have to respect what I have said. And that is political tolerance. We all of us get the same ideology. You understand? We all will follow the same thing because if we all go one way, you know, we'll eventually we'll get accidents and the states will be a failed state. So as a result of that, in terms of this particular government, I want to say, they don't get no elements or iota of political tolerance. It okay. is like... Okay, Marcos. Okay, Marcos. Point again taken. And I want to take this quickly to Dr. Matthew before we finally um, land. There are so many questions that we will ask. Probably we will try to create another day for this, but this has been a fascinating um, sort of um, conversation. Um, Dr. Matthew, this is not directly something we I learned from Marcos Bangura, a young social, you, you know, yeah, or um, um, how you call a community um, activist. There are many quotations that I've taken from him. I've managed to listen to the guy and follow him. And there are many things that I really, really agree with, sir. Like um, what he talk about political pluralism, what he's supposed to represent, the opposite of um, good governance, of course. Mm -hmm. It's just sensible enough. It's bad governance. But here is the issue, um, um, Dr. Matthew, okay? In terms of tolerance and issues of good governance. Marcos don't talk a lot about um, promises within the context of good governance, that in terms of promises, when you don't deliver, and I repeat, sir, when you don't deliver, then you have failed a people, and that in itself is part and parcel of bad governance. Will you agree? And if you agree, make a little bit of a point and develop your own on that, because as somebody you know they bring to you. Yeah, thank you very much. I totally agree with Marcos for say um, this particular administration don't fail this nation. But the, the fact remains that, and make I be very clear on this, APC was kicked out of power because people that may feel say it was not a good government. I was part of it because I was at the helm of uh, affairs at the state house. I know what policies mm -hmm. are going out. Now we do policies and get back to the president, you know. Um, a lot of people may think, say, three years ago, that government was not a good government. SFPP make a very good manifesto and then give more than 500 promises in that manifesto. Three years down the line, as I am talking to you now, go back to the SFPP manifesto. In fact, what did not happen, they don't deviate entirely from what they write inside the political manifesto. I can give you an example. The Lunga Bridge was never part of this administration, then political manifesto. All of a sudden, it just can no more than the, than the light. And that's a misleading. Another one for me, a little bit derogatory here. But for say the truth, I mean, this government don't fail this nation. I, I mean, it sounds derogatory, but I have to say it, that this government don't fail, this, this particular administration don't fail seven months to come. This government will be four years in power. As I talked to you soon, I yesterday petrol price on go. One liter of petrol is now 9,000. 500 news. Can you imagine? Dr. Murphy, Dr. Murphy, one minute. Uh, hold your thoughts right there and not lose them because you can be right back to it. 
I, I not follow, but you are saying that it's now official because I listened to some of the deliberation. It's now official that the price of petrol has officially gone up. Yes, 9,500 liters per liter. Thank you very much. We will talk about that at some other point, but continue with your point, please. Thank you so much. Thank you, th th thank you very much. So, so the cost of living is very expensive. We education don't drop. So many things where they give present administration may promise the people of this country. Uh, they're not able to deliver basic water. And I make it emphasize that economic, social, and cultural rights. I really want for a long time one day. Let's talk about human rights abuses, human rights violations, and with this particular administration. What do you, 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 you want to talk about next? What do you want to articulate next? Next is uh, now for talk about uh, uh, it, the government role and responsibility with respect to human rights. What is our government role and responsibility with respect to human rights? We'll let look at the economic, social, and cultural rights. Right to food, mm -hmm. right to water, right to life, right to education, right to uh, health, right to good environment, right to we'll good, good network. Okay, that's all, that's all right, sir. Yeah, that's all right. Thank you I've very much, it. yes. I've and got it. We'll talk, we'll talk that, about this. Yeah, thank you. Because that, that right now, now, they damage this country. So I mean, probably, so probably, ago, so probably, as a matter of caution, because we don't come to the end of the show, and it seems like this is going to be your last punchline. So as a, um, I will ask you, probably you want hold and then maybe you go blend down with an other with other stuff, but um, that will be your end line as I come back to you. So um, Fambulem, this now the then and now media platform, this now Prince Emil Koma today the first of July where they come to Una. A very very important program on CSOs that a civil society was supposed to act as a buffer or hold government accountable for issues on bad governance or whether not good governance. Co commend go uh, government when the structure is good and hold them to account, not as a malice, but rather for letting them all understand say what they do is not right. And we may get two very eminent personalities in person of Mr. Mm -hmm. Marcos Bangura and Dr. Um, Matthew. Um, we don't come to the end of the show, but normally on this platform, we'll come to the end of the show. We give the honors and the benefit to the guests them. So it's like a minute or two for a final wrap up. And I think so I will start with Marcos. Marcos, it's been a brilliant run. You get an opportunity for submit this entire conversation or even plus more and even provoke another segment into the future. I'm just saying this, but um, you've got um, between 60 seconds and um, 90 seconds, one, one minute and um, 30 seconds if you like, please. Um, thank you very much. Um, me, the call upon the government for make sure say we put the principles of good governance into play. You know, are very, very much particular about good governance because um, good governance don't become the barometer or the yardstick for measure the successes and the quality of governance of a government. Why is bad governance? They don't serve now as a barometer for measure the failures you know, of government. Because if only government, they forget about whatever sentiment, focus on good governance. We decide, for example, we talk about the features of good governance, say, for example, discipline. And when we talk about discipline, we talk about following the law, you know, processes procedures and structures. If we go by them, you know, the country, they progress. We look the area of transparency with our communication, where every government is charged with responsibility of communicating to the people. The people they deserve for know the activities of government and their responsibility that they. We look at the independence. We have, you know, government and, 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 and structures where it's supposed to be very, very independent. We don't really expect government for interfere. That is political interference. Where government interfere into certain things, you know, <laughs> it, it, it erode good governance. Accountability, every government, every worker, every citizen, any area where you did, you get a responsibility for being accountable to the people then. If for anything where you they do, any money where you go like earn, the area of fairness, the aspect of promises, where government make promise, Government gets responsibility for making sure say those promises are adhered to. Just like way Dr. Matthew they talk about the Lunge Bridge. What's that manifesto? Manifesto like the party program. Before the party can kind of power, it already make a program. 
So a kind of power, it transforms it into a policy, mm -hmm. then it becomes a law. So it's the responsibility of the government for follow. Then the social government don't follow them, left them, go do other things, you know, they don't actually give way to that. We look at consensus oriented. We forget a consensus, you know, political participation, allow people to participate, you know, responsiveness, effectiveness, efficiency. These are all aspects of good governance. So we expect every government for do. When governments don't do that today, they are bad government. Now when you look at authoritarianism, we will get democracy, but still there is an aspect of authoritarianism, despotism, where not good for democracy. Now because of all that in the, in the, in the, in the far back, they decide to say, look, we carry democracy. And the people's power, democracy simply by definition, it means the absolute political authority is vested in the people, not in the government. Government are the agents of the states. So it's vested in the people. And by what is vested in the people, mm -hmm. governments for ensure say they remain accountable to the people so that at least this particular country has to go forward ahead. And the issue of political intolerance, you know, it don't become an addiction. We don't be able to move forward if we get that aspect there. Political tolerance that a bedrock for many country go before. Then the issue of um, say it ostracize certain people and discrimination. All else that they don't go help we in this country. Human rights abuses, social economic rights, any definition of human rights will be incomplete if you don't look at base, the provision of basic social amenities. Okay. Like water, you know, um, you look at electricity. These are basic social amenities where Absolutely. every government is charged with responsibility of providing. And where government failed at the area, they also, government has failed not only itself, but its people and international community because Absolutely. of commitments made, you know, to them. Absolutely, Marcos, many thanks. Um, um, Dr. Matthew, um, on mm -hmm. final 90 seconds of your thoughts, please, on the program and the way forward, please. Thank you very much. Um, for me, I go um, talk directly to the current government in administration, that is Excellency, the president and his team. Um, let them go back to the drawing board um, they're not too late. It's not too late for them to go back to the drawing board and look at the things and we they need to go well in the country. Um, we will be in civil society, we will monitor human rights in the country. We are sudden. We are sudden in the sense that the previous administration been put this country uh, on a development track. There we are plans, there we are projects. 